Ladies and gentlemen, our program is going to begin in two minutes. Two minutes. Please find your seats. Thank you. Hola, nuestro programa comienza en dos minutos, así que por favor encuentren su asiento. Y de nuevo, si necesitan interpretación, vengan por un aparato a la mesa de enfrente.
please remain standing. Please remain standing. Por favor, manténganse de pie. Hola, mi nombre es Lena Morán de Comunidades Justas y yo soy una de sus intérpretes esta tarde. Este mensaje es bilingüe. Hello, my name is Lena Morán with Just Communities. I'm one of your interpreters today and this message is bilingual. Para, para proveer acceso lingüístico, para proveer acceso lingüístico a esta ceremonia, por el segundo año esta ceremonia será interpretada simultáneamente al español. In order to provide language access for the second year in a row, this ceremony is being simultaneously interpreted into Spanish. Noten que hay intérpretes al fondo del salón. Les pedimos a los oradores que hablen a paso moderado, ya que todo lo que se diga será interpretado y no queremos perder de nada. You will notice the interpreter booth in the back, and we ask all of our speakers to please talk at a moderate pace, as everything that is being said will be interpreted, and we don't want to miss anything. Al final de la ceremonia, antes de que se reúnan con su graduado para celebrar, por favor, regresen su equipo a la mesa de enfrente. At the end of the ceremony, before you join your graduate to celebrate, please return your equipment to the front table. Ahora pueden prender su aparato. You may now turn on your headset. La luz verde indica que está prendido. The green light indicates that it's on. Y por favor, manténganse de pie para el rector, Dr. Flores. Please remain standing for Provost Dr. Flores. As provost of Antioch University Santa Barbara, and on behalf of the Board of Governors of the University faculty, staff, and administration, I welcome you to our 2017 commencement ceremony. Before they sit down, I invite our graduating students to participate in an Antioch University tradition and ask that they turn around and face our guests today and extend a big thank you to your family and friends for their support and contributions. I'm going to ask the stage to continue standing. You may sit down. It is my pleasure to introduce today, um, and rather than everybody jumping up and down, uh, I will introduce all of the speakers and allow them then, at, at, as we finish, to, to, uh, to sit down. Join us from afar and representing the entire Antioch University system is Elsa Luna and she's representing the Board of Governors of Antioch University. Thank you. Uh, many of you know Andrew Teton. Uh, he, is the he is the recipient of the sixth annual AUSB Award for Excellence in Teaching. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, Jen Kennedy is the recipient of the third annual AUSB Award for Alumni Achievement. Thank you. <laughs> Dr. Barbara Lipinski is Antioch University Santa Barbara's Academic Dean. <laughs> it is the Academic Dean's role to recommend the candidates to the Provost for degrees at the end of the program in a commencement ceremony at which point I will award the degrees. I would like to formally introduce our chairs and I will ask them uh, each to stand as I call your name. Dr. Ron Pilato, Dr. Elizabeth Wilson, Dr. Marianne Damio Caston, Dr. Elaine Gale, Our MBA chair, Anna Kwong, is not able to join us today. She has. <laughs> Ross Brown. 
They will be they will be announcing the names of our candidates uh, as we get to each of the departments. Uh, four of our graduates, Dr. Damon Hickman. Uh, Ross, you, <laughs> it's okay. Uh, Kirsty Kenny, and Cland, uh, Clandis Payne, and Kathy Burba will also speak today. It is our mission as Antioch University to provide education which empowers students with the knowledge and skills to lead meaningful lives and to advance social, economic, and environmental justice. And this has been manifested in their experience at Antioch University Santa Barbara. They will each be introduced at a later point and they'll come to the stage. Finally, also on the stage for me today are our beloved and devoted faculty. Will you please rise? Thank you very much. You know, uh, this is off the speech, but Whenever I meet alumni, they'll always ask me, is so-and-so still teaching? Because each of you affect their lives and makes a difference. So thank you for everything you do. It is now my pleasure to give you our Board of Governor, Elsa Luna. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, Antioch faculty and honored students. I'm Elsa Luna, a member of the Board of Governors at Antioch University, and it's my distinct pleasure to welcome you on this memorable day. The Board of Governors is a group of volunteers who have come together with a shared commitment to the vision, mission, and values of Antioch. The Board of Governor has the legal responsibility to see the university is properly and prudently run. And the degrees you will be awarded today are granted under the Board of Governors. This day, however, is about you and this incredible accomplishment you've achieved. I'd like to share with you three main words in advice, in a formula, as you go into this world as an Antiochian graduate. Greatness plus respect equals peace. As Nike said, stated, greatness is a choice. There is nothing in your accomplishment and in your life that is not already great. Greatness in you, in us, is what has always made this country great. Greatness is not something we must be again. In all humbleness, we are already great, which is this choice we make. It's a choice you made when you pursued your education at Antioch, chose your major, studied and endured those sleepless nights, and have culminated to do your degree here today. Use your greatness to go into the world and contribute yourself into the framework of this American life. As Winston Churchill once said, the price of greatness is responsibility. Let's never forget as an Antiochian, with greatness you carry today and every day, a deep sense of responsibility. And with that comes my next word of advice to you, which is respect. As one of the greatest presidents in North American history said, entre los individuos como entre las naciones, el respeto al derecho ajeno es la paz. Among individuals, as among nations, the respect to others' people's right is peace. Benito Juarez. During troubling times in history, as in today, we Antiochians must use our responsibility of greatness to implore respect for one another in opinions, differences, 
and sometimes actions. The responsibility and respect for practices, words, and actions is what makes us great. Let's use what Antioch University has taught you in its progressive voice and social justice mission to respect one another and continue this voice in all our personal and professional lives. Finally, I leave you with a final thought, peace. Greatness plus respect equals peace. Peace, my graduates, built on the foundation of greatness with responsibility of respect is what you as graduates and all of our future deserves. Embrace the greatness that you are today, not what we must do again. Respect one another, and in the words of John Lennon, all we are saying is give peace a chance. Congratulations and felicidades, class of 2017. <laughs> Commencement is a very important time. It's a celebratory event, but it's also filled with a great deal of gravity and of tradition as we all dress in academic regalia that goes back to the Middle Ages, each wearing the symbols of our academic rank. And we come and enter into this room hearing pomp and circumstance. Commencement symbolizes the beginning of new opportunities that are afforded by the degree that the graduates receive today. Now like many before you, I'm sure that you came to Antioch University in Santa Barbara because you wanted to make a difference and we have no doubt that you will. I did not grow up with any intention of going to college. No one in my family had ever gone to college. In fact, um, of my cousins and uncles and aunts, I was the very first uh, to go to college. I had no role models. Growing up in San Diego, California, uh, most of my family either worked in the canneries or in uh, the Air Force, uh, or the, the um, in, in aircraft plants or for the Navy, Marines, or some other uh, part of the defense industry and in the military. When I was uh, in high school, I worked summers in an aircraft plant. And there was an explosion. Several people were injured. Uh, some were killed. And so I decided at that moment that I wanted to go to college. I wanted to try something different. And uh, I was lucky enough to get into UCLA. I studied very hard. My parents didn't have a lot of money. And so they gave me a, an old car and uh, took out a loan on the house um, so that I could at least have um, a, a little bit to start. And then I worked my way through college. When I eventually got my PhD, and this was after years of working in the community and private industry and nonprofits. When I finally graduated, 50 members of my family came up to, to the ceremony. They were so proud. And I remember my father saying, you know, um, they can take away your car, they can take away your house, you can lose your job, but they can never take away your education. How many of you are the first in your family to graduate from college, or the first generation to graduate from college? Please stand, please stand. All right, how many of you grew up speaking a language other than English? How
How many of you came from another country? All right. How many of you were in the military? How many of you How many of you worked more than 30 hours a week as you were working on your degree? Thank you all. And it tells you you made a lot of sacrifice. And I we already thanked your loved ones because they made sacrifices too. Maybe they worked extra hours, or they had to babysit, or they had to uh, do ch extra chores so that you could study. We thank them as well. Now, Bill Groves, who is the chancellor of Antioch University, was not able to be here so I'm going to read his remarks, and then I'll come back to make some remarks of my own. First, congratulations, graduates. Today, we are celebrating you. Although you may have finished with your studies, you're not finished with us. Because you are an Antioch graduate and an alum. And you share in the Antioch spirit, in its DNA. Antioch University is a national university, and whether you graduated from Santa Barbara today or some that are graduating in LA, Ohio, New England, or Seattle, or through our online division, or at the Graduate School of Leadership and Change, you are an alumnus of Antioch University, and you join the family of 75,000 alumni throughout this great country. Now, as a, a new alum, you join a noble and venerable group who've accomplished amazing things. Coretta Scott King, teacher, mother, civil rights leader, and author. Eleanor Holmes Norton, an iconic advocate in the civil rights movement and delegate to Congress from the District of Columbia. Mario uh, Capecci, who graduated in 1961 and was a co-recipient of the 2007 Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine. Um, Jose Manuel Ramos Horta, who got his MA in Peace Studies in 1984 and was the co-recipient of the 1996 Nobel Prize, the Peace Prize, and later became president of East Timor. Or Leon Hingbotham, Jr., civil rights advocate, author, and chief justice of the first and first African American to serve on the Third Circuit U.S. Court of Appeals. You joined them. And hopefully, like them, will set traditions. You'll be hearing from Antioch and from our Alumni Association. We want to hear from you. We want to be with you on your journey as you go forward. And we want you to be with us on our journey. We want to help you celebrate your achievements, and we need to help you, we need your help as we go forward as a university. And there's a lot we want and need to do. Today, we are living in a world that needs Antioch more than ever. Since it opened in 1852, Antioch has had a reputation for innovation, academic excellence, social progressivism, and social activism. Horace Mann, in our inner, as it is in our mission statement, um, empowered students to lead meaningful lives and to advance social, economic, and environmental justice. And the university has lived that mission. In 1859, Antioch was the first college in America to admit black and white students to, to study together side by side. This policy predated the Civil War and it reflected what Antioch stands for. 
It was an outrageously bold act of humanity that, given the times, was nothing less than revolutionary. In the 1860s, Antioch was the first college to employ female faculty on the same terms as male faculty. Antioch was the first liberal arts college to embrace experimental learning, taking the classroom to the workplace and the workplace to the classroom. And in the 1960s, it was a pioneer in civil rights so, and social activism, earning the reputation as the boot camp for the revolution. Today, you and your faculty are working in many, many different ways. This, whatever the disciplines are, they're working to reduce disparities in education, in mental health service delivery, in Latino communities, providing scholarship opportunities for those who want to serve society's aging population, establishing nonprofit organizations to pr promote education and community well-being, serving in, leading, in leadership roles, in professional associations, such as the Santa Barbara County Psychological Association, and advocating for the protection of the planet, as well as for the most vulnerable in our society, the homeless, victims of dom domestic violence and addiction. Inspiring the hearts, minds, and souls of children so that they are prepared to lead healthy, happy, and productive lives. These examples, your examples, define the Antioch spirit. Those were the comments from Bill Groves. Let me just say a few words. Because I would add that we need you and your commitment to social change, to make this a better world. Senator Travis once said, we cannot seek achievement for ourselves and forget about pros progress and prosperity for others. Our ambitions must be broad enough to include the aspirations and needs of others for their sakes and for our own. Years ago, I had the pleasure of meeting Nelson Mandela, who's a hero of social change. He led a revolution against apartheid from a prison cell. But he made it clear that the most powerful weapon for social change is education. You have that weapon in your hands and you can change the world. We look for you to go on and make amazing and beautiful changes. So think big and dare to make the world better. Thank you. Dr. Wolfson, please come to the stage. There's my people over here. Thank you, Dr. Lipinski, Dr. Flores. It is now my honor to introduce Ms. Jen Kennedy, the 2017 recipient of Antioch University Santa Barbara Distinguished Graduate Award. Jen had a rich and successful career before attending Antioch. Starting as a publicist, she then worked as a freelance journalist for over a decade. Both these careers were about her love for people, a burning desire to understand what made people expand and retract, struggle or thrive, led her to the Master's in Clinical Psychology program at Antioch University, Santa Barbara. In 2015, Jen earned a Master's in Clinical Psychology and trained simultaneously with three local sites Community Counseling and Education Center, Pacific Pride Foundation, and private practice under supervision. Jen has finished her arduous 3,000 clinical hours and passed her licensing exam in record time. 
She is now building a thriving private practice with a focus on couples, addiction, and LGBT issues. MACP is about helping people with their internal and interpersonal challenges, but it's also about finding solutions to social injustices and collaborative leadership. Jen has been that kind of leader, active on the board of Santa Barbara Kampft, where she has worked tirelessly as the communications point person, and now will step into the role of programming chair. I suspect she has only just begun to make her mark in the field of psychology. It is my pleasure to ask to the podium Antioch University Santa Barbara's annual third recipient of the Distinguished Graduate Award, Ms. Jen Kennedy. All right. Good afternoon. Glad you guys are here. Okay, so first off, I would like to thank the committee and specifically Elizabeth, who nominated me. Um, it's, this is a huge honor, and I feel really proud to be part of this Antioch family. All of you, your faces. Um, let's see, I'm aware that we come to Antioch um, through very different paths. We have different histories, resources, goals, and even academic experiences while we are here. I see our diversity as a strength, something that makes Antioch as a community of people unique from other un universities. My road has been winding, as Elizabeth <laughs> mentioned. I began with a BA in public relations, uh, which led me to working in marketing agencies throughout my 20s. I always loved people, and this career gave me endless opportunities to interact with business leaders and media. However, I remember feeling restless, incomplete. I wanted more. I wanted to feel passionate about my work. Next, I returned to art school for a degree in photography. <laughs> uh, through this work, I learned patience, and I explored my creative and kind of quieter side. I spent my 30s as a freelance journalist and photographer. I was always focused on people. I learned how to ask questions and how to build rapport quickly. I also learned how to read body language, how to connect with people who would eventually let me tell their stories through both words and photos. And then my mom suddenly died. It knocked the breath out of me. It made me question so many things. This loss also made me feel mortal. I took stock of my life. I examined my purpose, my priorities. And through this soul searching, I had to acknowledge that there had always been this secret desire to pursue work as a psychotherapist. It had come up as an idea at the end of my bachelor's degree but it just seemed too expensive. It seemed like too grand of a plan. But now it seemed like the path that I'd been setting up to walk the whole time. At 40, I started the MACP program at Antioch. I was both nervous and excited. I felt too old to be going back to school. Yet I was so driven and stimulated by the material. All that reading forced me to get my first set of glasses. <laughs> and my schedule was just erratic. It was just, it shifted constantly. Um, somehow I pieced together a series of appointments between my three training sites, as well as all my classes and endless hours of supervision. <laughs> Highly supervised. Um, somehow it all got done. I opened my private practice and steadily it has grown with intention and with luck. But I have not tried to be all things to all people. Rather, I chose my areas of focus early and I've stayed true to them. I remember learning the term flow state in school. I had experienced it a few times in my life already. It's when I'm so engrossed in what I'm doing that I don't notice almost anything else. Not the passage of time, not my hunger, not the obstacles that seem ever present when I'm normally considering my dreams. Rather, during flow state, I'm completely present, content, 
and available for whatever comes. Coined by a Hungarian psychologist, whose name I cannot pronounce, and adopted as a key concept by the positive psychology approach, flow is the mental state of operation in which a person performing an activity is fully immersed in a feeling of energized focus, full involvement, and enjoyment in the process of the activity. In essence, flow is characterized by complete absorption in what one does. I know I am in the right place, and I am doing the right work, because I consistently feel flow. For 50 minutes at a time, I'm having a fascinating, nuanced, intricate, verbal and nonverbal dance with another person. I find this work stimulating and satisfying like nothing else. When I look back at my journey, I'm acutely aware of how all the experiences that came before, both professionally and personally, have been tools to help me better show up for this work. Because I have so much lived experience, albeit painful, frustrating, saddening, even embarrassing at times, <laughs> It serves as a well from which I can draw wisdom and willingness to help others. Because I have lived my unique life, I am able to empathize with clients and into it what comes next, what they need from me. I'm going to bet that you too have a history that, you can, that can serve you well and inform you how to show up for your work or in your relationships. I celebrate our winding, sometimes complicated paths as preparation for our next chapter. And I am grateful that Antioch also appreciates, even promotes our diversity and our lifelong learning. Remembering key people along the way is also important. These are the people that believe in you, that support you, that challenge you to be your better self. In that spirit, I want to thank Andrew Teton for the outstanding instruction. I found him inspiring, quirky, <laughs> and fiercely dedicated to my learning. I also want to thank my beautiful wife, Georgine, who supported me in a thousand different ways, from packing my lunch, to listening to me obsessively count those hours, to pep talks as I launch headlong into this new career. Graduates, I wish you well in your pursuits and again thank you so much for this award. Thank you Miss Kennedy. It is my honor to introduce the 2017 recipient of the Award for Excellence in Teaching, Mr. Andrew Teton. Andrew, would you please stand for a moment? All right, thank you. I will say a few words and then I'll call him up here to the microphone. Mr. Andrew Teton was nominated and selected by his peers for this seventh annual award and was chosen for excellence in teaching, instructional design, passion for inspiring students, and going above and beyond. Andrew began his teaching career in 2003 here at Antioch University Santa Barbara. Over the span of these 14 years, he has mentored hundreds of students perhaps as many as 900 students. His dedication to student learning and success is commendable. His enthusiasm and expertise have been an inspiration to students developing their skills as marriage and family therapists and professional clinical counselors. Many of the graduates here today have had the pleasure of sitting in his classroom. Here is a sampling of their comments. We all love Andrew, and I will for, be forever grateful for his teaching. Teton's the best. We all know it. 
So, so, so thankful for him in this program. Andrew Teton is an incredible teacher. Every moment is full of learning, and I appreciate every skill. Similar endorsements can be heard by his faculty colleagues. Andrew is intellectually gifted, naturally curious, and passionate in his teaching approach. Goes above and beyond what is typically expected. Makes himself available, often on his own time, to students and colleagues. Clearly, the success of each and every student is a priority for Andrew. Andrew, in commemoration of this occasion, I would like to ask you to come up to the podium now. Please join me in congratulating Andrew Teton, the recipient of the Award in Excellence in Teaching. It is my honor to present Andrew with this beautiful plaque from Antioch University, Santa Barbara, as well as a gift from the school. Andrew, congratulations. Thank you very Thank you. much. Yeah. So, I'll put the box in. Okay. So the first thing that my psychology students learn to ask is, what are you feeling in your body right now? <laughs> and I'm a somatically trained body-based psychotherapist, and I'm having an out-of-body experience. <laughs> I'm going to do some grounding breath so I can join you and stay present. It was incredibly kind of you to applaud before you even heard me speak. I have to be candid with you. Usually, my students only applaud when I finally stop speaking. <laughs> but don't worry, you haven't over-encouraged me. I'm pretty good about time boundaries. My students have pointed this out many times. They've also pointed out I'm somewhat of a micromanager and a perfectionist. And last week in week 10 is a farewell gift. They gave me a diagnosis. <laughs> yeah, they diagnosed me with obsessive compulsive personality disorder. <laughs> I don't quarrel with that. They got that from a book they study called the DSM. Have you heard of that? The Devil's Statistical Manual. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Having said that, and being aware of time boundaries, I want to start with what's most important to me, which is to thank Antioch University for this incredible honor. I am deeply touched. I am humbled by this and it has incredible personal resonance because in 1994, I was seated there as a graduate from Antioch. In 1991, when I had the good fortune to work with a gifted psychotherapist, I became inspired and I wanted to enter this field. It was a little daunting considering going to graduate school as I was entering the first blush of middle age. And I was delighted to find one of the finest training universities I could want was right here. Well, not at the Fess Parker, but right at Antioch. <laughs> I loved my Antioch education. It was an incredible gift to receive a training so my career could be based around something so meaningful. And every Antioch education is infused with the 165-year-old tradition of Antioch's principles of social engagement and civic contribution. 
That principle of contributing to the welfare of others is best summarized by Antioch's founder, Horace Mann, who said, be ashamed to die until you win some victory for humanity. Antioch has many wonderful degree programs, and the proud graduates of those programs are seated right here. And I know they're all infused with Antioch's precepts of social advancement. But it's the journey of the graduates of the clinical psychology students I know the best. And I'd like to speak for a moment or two about the transformational path that they are on. I remember in my second year at Antioch when I entered my traineeship and began working with real clients and their real world issues. The support I received as an Antioch student was crucial for me to learn not only how to do this work, but how to embrace this work. And at that time, I formed the intention that if it might be possible, I would like to give back to Antioch. Fourteen years ago, while working two jobs and running a small private practice and teaching workshops on the weekend. I managed to find time and teach my first class at Antioch. That experience was so rewarding that I never stopped. I kept teaching more and more, and now teaching at Antioch is the cornerstone of my professional life. As of last week, I taught my 135th class. As an adjunct faculty, the way we calculate that is that makes me 180 years old in adjunct years. <laughs> I relish teaching because I love the experience of the students' engagement, their wish to be challenged to learn, and the way they challenge me to learn my craft better, to help them understand this complex art form and craft. And I always like to remind my students that there are many paths up the mountain, that they have their own journeys. What I so admire about my students is their willingness to go on this path, to be challenged on this daunting journey. And they do the hard work, and yes, let's be frank, they take on those student loans, all because they want to bring their full humanity into a counseling room to care about the struggles of others. The rewards are immense when we measure how our hearts are touched. When I see my students in their second year and they're working in their traineeships and they're doing the change work, I realize they're already achieving what Horace Mann talked about by contributing to the lives of the people in our community. In closing, I want to thank Antioch University for selecting me for this award. I want to thank the staff and administration of Antioch for all the care and dedication they pour into their work. I'd like to thank Catherine Radecki Bush and Elizabeth Wolfson, the two chair women who have hired me and supported me. I'd like to thank my fantastic teaching team that inspires our students. I'd like to thank my students for inspiring me. I want to thank particularly my wife, Deborah. She. <laughs> My wife is a countywide award-winning educator and school counselor herself. Her guidance and support have been invaluable. Lastly, I want to leave you with a quote. And this is from a man named Horace, but it's not from Horace Mann. <laughs> it's from a contemporary of his, a newspaper editor named Horace Greeley. 
He's the person that said, go west, young man, go west. Now, Horace Mann was in Yellow Springs, Ohio, at the Antioch campus, and he liked the revolutionary spirit. He wanted to circulate the same message, but first he had to put it in Antioch-appropriate language. And when he did it, he sent his revised message out. And Horace Mann was ahead of his time. He sent it out through his Twitter account. <laughs> That's right, Antioch's Horace Mann was the first president to use Twitter, and he never used the word confeve. <laughs> Here's the message he sent out. Go west, go west. Not just men, but also, of course, women. Not just the young, but also, of course, members of the healthy aging cohort. <laughs> and when you open an Antioch campus in Santa Barbara, let me know. I'll be there in a flash. Thank you very much and enjoy the celebration. Thank you, Mr. Teton. Before presenting the candidates for the Bachelor of Arts degree, we will hear from our first graduate speaker, Mr. Damon Hickman, who is graduating from our Bachelor of Arts program. Mr. Hickman. Hi everybody, my name is Damon. <laughs> I discovered Antioch University Santa Barbara through my best friend of 20 years. We met in kindergarten and the rest is history. Before Antioch, Amy, in her own words, was shy, closed-minded, and insecure. After Antioch, there was an open and confident person ready to impact the world. Antioch, with its mission to empower students to lead meaningful lives and to advance social, economic, and environmental justice, encouraged Amy to open up and learn more about herself and the world. She gained a new perspective and a desire to travel. Since graduating in 2015, she has visited five countries. The courage has always been within her, but I can't deny Antioch's role in bringing it to fruition. Comparing who Amy was before Antioch with who she became by her commencement, I wondered, how did Antioch's education have such a transformative effect on my friend? A transformation is a thorough change in form or appearance. At Amy's commencement two years ago, I wondered what a transformation in my life would look like. So, while watching Amy accept her diploma, I told myself, I'm going to leave Sacramento, move to Santa Barbara, and attend Antioch. I envisioned myself walking across this stage, a more aware, confident, and determined person. And here I am. <laughs> now, I'm going to tell you about three of the classes at Antioch that contributed to my evolution, that, like Amy's, altered the direction of my life. The first class, Social Justice Movements, examined the nature of social movements from historical and philosophical perspectives. The American Civil Rights Movement of the 50s and 60s was given special emphasis. I learned racism did not end with slavery. It was institutionalized in terms of education, housing, and criminal justice. It was essentially weaved into the fabric of our social conscious. That does not fade quickly. I learned at the center of all social movements, there are people 
people like you and me, and that collective action is the only way to create change. It was moving learning about the struggles brave people endured to protect my rights as a black man. This class gave me a sense of pride in who I am that was not present prior. <clears throat> The second class, world media, focused on the human right to communicate and media in a global context. The electronic colonialism theory considers media's ability to influence our minds, society, and culture. This theory served as a centerpiece of class discussions when considering the effects powerful countries, like the United States, have on the cultures of other less powerful countries because of the exportation of culture through media. This fascinated and concerned me. This class gave me insight to how powerful media is and how important the messages communicated are. I realized my future career in journalism that I've long foreseen must somehow elevate society and be a force for good. The third class is the Odyssey. <laughs> Antioch University, Santa Barbara's digital magazine, and throughout my senior year, I've created and published content. The Day with Day is an interview show. <laughs> the Day with Day is an interview show I created, where I interview people on the streets about social and political topics. With the filming and editing expertise of my classmate, Leah, <laughs> we've asked questions including, is America great? Can art help bridge the divide in society? And should business or the environment take precedent? It has been an amazing experience. The day with day was an idea for years, but the Odyssey empowered me to make it a reality. I realize through journalism, my contribution to society will be to encourage questions and discussion in an age where logic and facts are questioned. I want to continue interviewing and initiating conversations about society because it's important and necessary. The Odyssey allowed me to envision and begin executing a future in social journalism that I hope will elevate the awareness of society. These classes facilitated the type of transformation in my life that I saw in my friend Amy's life. Before Antioch, I was timid, unmotivated, and unfocused. Now, I'm the person I was born to be. <laughs> the education and atmosphere Antioch provides is different. Not only is the emphasis placed on expanding knowledge, but also on looking within ourselves to make sense of the world. I discovered before you can impact the world, you must know your passions, your biases, and who you are. Like Amy, I now live my life with open eyes, an open mind, and an open heart. Antioch University taught me helping to transform society starts with transforming yourself first. Thank you. Thank you so much for that wonderful speech, Damon. My name is Dr. Elaine Gale, and I'm the interim chair of the Antioch Santa Barbara Bachelor of Arts program. In a few moments, BA graduates will be announced. So we know that everyone is eager to get a photograph of your graduate crossing the stage. And please remember, for safety reasons, we have to keep the aisles clear. So we've reserved space for those taking photographs to stand on the side where the graduates leave the stage, so over here. Um, so now, can we please have the BA students and the BA faculty come forward?
I just call them one by one. Yeah. Okay. And do the do the BA to scrap the faculty come over here? No, they'll be right there. They'll That's be right, right there. there. Okay. Fantastic. It was fantastic. I'm so proud of you, Damon. It was, I love you too. It was fabulous. Fabulous. Yeah, can I ask you, Daniel, how does it work? Do they hand it to. Yeah. Hi. So, yeah, so we, I think we are going to start. We're going to go ahead and start. Okay, awesome. You look amazing. So our first BA graduate is Damon Hickman. Scarlett McDonald. Lisa Rosen. Shakib Yousefi. Carl Evers. <laughs> Howard Vega Alvera. Fabulous. Bronwyn Wallace. Tootie Weitzman. Anjali Common. Tony Warren. Karen Hernandez. <laughs> Travis Spencer. Yeah, and then you tell me when. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Leah Durham. Samantha Beach. Anna Ewald. Athena Brox. Eric first. <laughs> Connie Navarro. <laughs> Judy Sotelo. Is it? Okay. 
Lisette Hadamio. Jeff Kong. Anakin Anderson. Tamina Ansari. Linus Wick. Got it. Nicholas Buschini. Oscar Carlson. Jenny Sungott. Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. Yeah. Camilla Yayawi. Yours is easy. <laughs> Caroline Carlson. Okay, I'm ready. Oksana Piscanova. Yeah. <laughs> Veronica Cervantes. Hi. Christiane Clifford Shell. <laughs> Alexandria Wolf Grady. Christy Clay. Danny. Yep. Danny Natcher. Okay. Lee Long Tai. Jasmina Yomquist. <laughs> Matilda Fell. Okay. Abigail Lieb. Cecia Kors. Yours is easy. <laughs> Dylan Broyles. Thank you. Jillian Fowler. Awesome. Alicia Briggs. Caitlin Boysen. Awesome. Is it Brolick? Brolick? We'll do it. We'll do a better one later. You too. Travis Brolick. Hi. Oh, good. Hi. Saud Khatib. Saud. Saud Khatib. Hope Robber. Hi, darling. Wait, is it that? Yeah. Autumn Van Diver. <laughs> Lars Victor Turn. <laughs> I remember you. You had a great. Yeah, perfect. Hannah Cooper. <laughs> T 
Tim Person. Adam Renebo. Sirwan Assad. Okay. Lorenzo Balestrini. Oh, nice. He's so great. He's so great. Leonore Breton. Rosa Pinedo. Dora Dorado. Hi. Oh, yours is easy. You too, doll. Eleanor Lindbergh. We'll do another one later. How do you say your name? Okay. Anakin Gaka Tronstad. Hi, Henstein. Beautiful. Henstein? Okay. Kaya Henstein. Got it. Isaac Hernandez. Tamia Conrad. Bolger, perfect. I love your hat. Megan Bolger. Jared Valdez. Okay, good. Jared Valdez. Oh gosh, you too. Shelter, got it. Christopher Shelberg. Last but not least. Exactly. Palacios. Palacios. And Kevin Palacios. So please give a big round of applause for our Bachelor of Arts candidates. So before presenting the candidates for graduate degrees, we'll hear from our second graduate speaker, Kathy Burba, who's graduating from our Master of Business Administration program. Kathy. Hi, I'm Kathy Burba. I come from a background of service, having spent 27 years in the Army before, at the age of 50, I decided I should go back to school. <laughs> um, and what brought me to Antioch University was the mission. It really resonated with me. The Antioch mission of providing learner-centered education really got my attention. And I have to say that um, how we actualize that is important to me as an alumni. I would like to take a few minutes to describe 
what that means in my life and how it will lead me in the future. I was never a very good student. I did not even learn to read until the fourth grade. And coming out of high school, I really had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. But the Army offered me an education and a job to the ROTC scholarship, and I took it. After 27 years of serving in the Army, receiving a lot of leadership development, having a successful career, I had learned to embrace the idea of a growth mentality. And I was ready to shift and see how I could contribute in other ways. I decided to use Antioch as my platform to do that. Because Antioch was promoting this idea of experiential learning beyond the classroom with a strength-based application. What resonated with me was the university climate, the values, the diversity, and I especially liked that it produced confident community leaders. I picked Antioch because it had a reputation for inspiring students towards social justice, and I planned to transition into the nonprofit sector. I needed to learn business, but I wanted to learn it in a way that would give me the tools to give back to our community. Antioch did this. The MBA program had a nonprofit element to it. In addition to the core business curriculum, and inculcated the idea of social responsibility. For both corporate and nonprofit worlds, this was really appealing. I also appreciated that it supported non-traditional students, like veterans and older students. I did not know how much Antioch would really change me as a person, but it did. It provided the time, space, and resources I needed to see what strengths I might offer the community and what weaknesses I needed to develop. I realized by going to Antioch that it was much more than the classes. It was about the community, social impact, and contributing. The cohort structure really contributed to my success. Built as a support system, the cohort provided a tight-knit group of diverse students that I could trust and succeed with. I will continue to turn to them, you all, for many years to come. I was a leader before I came to Antioch, but now I am a more socially conscious, self-aware leader that is in a better position to lead open dialogue for change in those areas that still need it. Graduates from Antioch leave with a sense of citizenship. As I ease out into the community, there are several areas that resonate with me. I am committed to furthering advocacy for individuals with disabilities through my efforts with the Hinchy Foundation. This foundation provides home-style living for individuals that require managed care and provides community integration. I am passionate about mentoring here at Antioch through the Women in Leadership program and the MBA program. I also offer leadership coaching to a different point of view, one of my classmates' nonprofits, who serves and inspires youth, and lend my experience to a leadership development steering committee of the American Red Cross. I help represent Antioch in the community by participating in community events through role modeling, and through my active participation of the Alumni Association. Since I do have to make money too, <laughs> I recently started a, a small consulting business for nonprofits that focuses on strategic planning for those that don't have it in-house. I feel these efforts represent the actualization of what I learned from Antioch, and they are only the beginning of what I hope to do in the future. I am committed to Antioch. I'm committed to our community. I'm committed to advocacy. I think it would be presumptuous to say that I'm a transformational leader, but I can definitely say that I am a transformed leader as a result of my experience here. My hope is that Antioch will continue to grow the student population so more people have access to higher education and can develop this sense of growth mentality and will transcend the classroom and spill into the community Ultimately, 
Antioch alumni will continue to invest in citizenship and we will remain a positive force in this community and nationally and globally. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Uh, congratulations to all of our graduates today. And I am not Anna Kwong, the program director for the MBA program. Anna is actually uh, completing family duties. Her daughter is graduating from UC Irvine today, so she's off. And she wanted me to fill in. I'm adjunct faculty with the MBA program. And I wanted Anna, myself, and all the faculty extend uh, sincere congratulations to all of the MBA classes graduating today. This is Antioch's second cohort of Masters of Business Administration graduates. And I want to congratulate all of them. And I'd like to call you up and accept your diplomas. Catherine Burpa. Lynn Houston. Addie Garfinkel, plus one. Jennifer Brown. Lawanda Croft. Anthony Jackson. Jamie Dufek. Sydney Kassler. And Jono Valencia. Congratulations to all of this year's graduating MBA class. Welcome. My name is Marianne Demedio Caston. I'm the chair of AUSB's graduate education program, and I'm here to welcome the faculty. And would the faculty please come forward? I'm going to move over to that podium over there, and the candidates need to move over there as well.
Okay. Antoinette Moreland Carter. <laughs> Samantha Bedoya. Again, it's Ismael Oyoa. A Brittany Deckard. It's Beatriz Hernandez. Fatima Estrada. Jolie Hulsizer. Let me have a hug. It gives me great pleasure to present these students with a round of applause. And congratulations. presenting the candidates for the Master of Arts in Clinical Psychology, we'll hear from our third graduate speaker, Ms. Christy Kenny, who is graduating from our MECP program. Good afternoon, fellow graduates, faculty, family, and friends. Soto Zen monk and teacher Suzuki Roshi once said, in the beginner's mind, there are many possibilities, but in the experts, there are few. We are beginners. Today, we walk out of here one degree wiser and full of promise. Our potential is limitless and our capabilities are as big as we can dream them. We are an extraordinary breed of graduates because we hail from Antioch University, Santa Barbara. We have been empowered to create a real difference in this world. Week after week, we hurried onto campus, filled the classrooms, and hunkered down for up to nine hours of instruction. Coffee in hand, we actively listened as our teachers and, prepare, and professors prepared us for the future we were embarking on. They enriched our lives, not only with their knowledge, but with their compassion for the communities they each serve. My journey here at Antioch has been one of immense personal growth. With each quarter came a new challenge, and with each challenge came two choices. I could use each obstacle as an excuse for failure or as a reason to succeed. Spoiler alert, I used each obstacle as a reason to succeed. My personal growth came in the form of compassion for self. Before I could flourish, I had to accept where I was, not just academically, but in all facets of my life. Having compassion for myself, I became deeply rooted in the ground and stood tall with more confidence than I ever had. One day, my branches grew, and it was only then that I could start to reach out to others and be the strength that they needed. Therefore, it was through having compassion for myself as a human being that I became capable of helping others. I once read a quote by American astrophysicist, author, and science communicator, Neil deGrasse Tyson, that said, I know of no time in human history where ignorance was better than knowledge. Right along with that belongs a quote by Chinese philosopher, teacher, and political figure Confucius. Real knowledge is to know the extent of one's ignorance. 
My time at Antioch University has been a lot like opening my eyes for the first time. I was seeing things that had been right in front of me the entire time, but I had not acknowledged, such as the percentage of Santa Barbara's homeless population who are plagued by untreated mental illness and the ways in which our society is failing our most vulnerable citizens. Opening my eyes for the first time was distressing, uncomfortable, but what was important was the willingness to keep my eyes open and not being afraid to see more. My ability to tolerate social inequalities, environmental injustices, and economic oppression has dwindled. I no longer want to just help people. The skills I have learned in my graduate program can afford me the opportunities to do so much more. I not only want to help those who walk into my therapy room, I want to create change on a larger scale, like a ripple effect. Antioch has motivated me to see the bigger picture. Antioch has inspired me to dig deeper. And Antioch has encouraged me to go that one step further. My perception of the world has been forever changed, and my desire to make a difference will continue to grow. I am a beginner, and in my mind, there are endless amounts of possibilities. My potential is limitless, and my capabilities are as big as I can dream them. Thank you, and to everyone, muchos besos. Thank you, Kirsty. My name is Dr. Elizabeth Wolfson, Chair of the MA in Clinical Psychology program, and I'm delighted to present our graduates. Would the graduates and faculty from the MACP program please come forward? Kirsty Kenny. <laughs> Katie Backer. <laughs> Sierra Ann Boatwright. Katie Angers. <laughs> Jennifer Kepnick. Aaron Gill. Devin Nye. <laughs> Shannon Bates. So much written on here. Stephanie Stern. <laughs> Lisa Walker. <laughs> Lorenza Malgoza. Yesenia Vega Shabola. Angelica Ramirez. <laughs> Lauren Hill. 
Maria Rodriguez. Gladys Sandoval. Suzanne Mayayenas. Emily Gonzalez. Jesse Withers. Anna Reidenbach. Johnny Ho. Patricia Ebner. Your Jorge Cortez. <laughs> Kara Thomas. Sila Siebert. <laughs> Amanda Silvey. <laughs> Pallavi Kumar. <laughs> Julian Mannix. Claire Blakey. Please give a round of applause for our Masters in Clinical Psychology graduates. My name is Dr. Ron Pilato, and I'm the chair of the PsyD program, doctoral program in clinical psychology. <laughs> to mark the significant milestone along the path of a doctor in psychology, a doctor in psychology, or the PsyD degree, students are awarded a Master of Arts psychology in psychology. These students will continue their studies and will return in a few years to graduate to receive their doctoral degrees. Would the Master of Arts psychology students and faculty please come forward? You guys. The following students are receiving the Masters of Arts in Psychology on their pathway towards the doctoral degree. I need your name. I need your name slip. Lawrence, Lawrence Miller. <laughs> Come on up. Peter Achenbach.
Kyle DeFluvio. Itai Cohen. And Reed Vieira. Please give a round of applause for our Pathway Master graduates. I'm very happy to welcome um, our distinguished graduate, Clandis Payne, to the podium to uh, hear her thoughts. Thank you. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you to uh, Provost William Flores and Dean Barbara Lipinski for providing this commencement graduate speaking opportunity. I chose the Antioch system of learning because it's a school that produces greatness. The likes of Coretta Scott King, who is so effective that even after her transition to ancestorhood, she informs us of the character and what to expect from some of our politicians today. Winona LaDuke, who speaks up for First People's land and civil rights. Even Leonard Nimoy and Rod Serling, some of the most memorial and ingenious performers and writers have learned from the Antioch system. I want to thank Drs. Brett Keita Keating, Dr. Dan Schwartz, Dr. Ronald Palato, and Dr. Salvador Trevino for honoring my work with giving me the prestigious Antioch Santa Barbara University Saidi Award in Social Excellence in Social Justice. Thank you. In our nonprofit organization, The Healing Well, we advocate for those like me, the traumatized, the African-American, women, the aged, the young, the disabled, the disabled with an emotional support, an animal. We realize some scars are invisible to the naked eye. The homes that produce these scars internally and or externally do not endorse speaking up for you. Mine certainly didn't. Developmentally, I've discovered it's impossible almost to speak up for someone else if you haven't been trained to speak up for you. I needed to be trained in this. Antioch University Santa Barbara helped me with this training on three very memorial occasions. Take this journey with me, won't you? As a first year student, I spoke up with my desire to explore how to combine my degree in theater with psychology. One of my professors, Dr. Juliet Rody Brown, saw this spark and encouraged me to develop this direction, which contributed to my study. In 2009, during my first year of classes, I was chosen to be, a be in a panel de delegation from Antioch University, Santa Barbara, to present at the Society of Humanistic Psychology at the conference, hosted by the Alliance School of Professional Psychology in Chicago. My family accepted the responsibility that I would go, and we were determined to, to make the sacrifice necessary to support me in this non-paid endeavor. Neither Robert nor I said anything to anyone regarding the difficulty we would have paying for this trip, except through prayer. By the way, prayer is 
speaking up for you with the divine. Miraculously, the next thing I know, after having applied for a um, expense, I received five hundred dollars to cover some of the expenses on this trip, and that's amazing. I just thank God that Antioch University Santa Barbara was so sensitive enough to relieve some of the financial hardship for this trip. It was a wonderful experience. Working with the delegates on the presentation, the faculty who were at the time, Dr. Juliet Rudy Brown and Dr. Elizabeth Wolfson. We also were with Shaman Art Cisneros. The intention of the presentation was to bring more diversity to the humanistic psychology. When we were finished with our presentation, I contacted my relatives that live in the Chicago area. It was my intention to connect with these precious ones as I had not seen them for many years. My mother and I were estranged for 20 years because of the emotional and physical abuse that I had um, suffered at her hands, even till that day. She lived in suburban Chicago, much, which is much like Santa Barbara. So out of respect and desire to reach out, <laughs> I called her expecting to be welcome for a visit. To my shock and horror, she refused the visit. I felt devastated and saddened, destroyed, barely hanging on during the dinner with my, my spouse and my two aunts. When I returned to California, I had a two-week resurgence of a major depressive episode, at which time I could not function. After a couple of weeks, I got back on my feet and I advocated for myself and explained to each one of my professors what I had just experienced and its effect on my ability to function those weeks. Out of four classes, all instructors, upon hearing my struggle, either excused me or gave me makeup work to keep me on track, expressing empathy and providing a holding environment, modeling compassion, and trust, as well as yet a consistent commitment to my learning. The demonstration of compassion was an energy that helped me to complete my final quarter of academics. I don't see people giving compassion without at some point being granted compassion. With this experience, I went on to become a compassionate caregiver who could advocate for myself to my mother. And when within one year of reuniting with her and reestablishing a new relationship of mutual respect, she succumbed to lung cancer. We've heard this already, but I want to tell you this. Antioch's first president, Horace Mann's last professional statement concluded the first commitment address at Antioch College. I beseech you, treasure up in your hearts these my parting words. Be ashamed to die until you have won some victory for humanity. I concur and I am still here. Thank you, Clandis. Last but certainly not least, it gives me great pleasure to present 10 students who are receiving their doctorate in clinical psychology or PsyD degrees. Each PsyD graduate will receive the doctoral hood from the faculty member who oversaw his or her dissertation committee. I will also read the title of each graduate's dissertation 
so you can get an idea of the research these graduates have already contributed to the field. <laughs> so you've already come to the podium. Wonderful. Okay. I'm gonna go. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Faculty. Yeah. The faculty come forward, please. The students have already come forward, so now I'd like the faculty to come forward. Thank you. James Chavers. <laughs> Committee Chair, Daniel Schwartz. Dissertation title, Double Whammy, Understanding the Psychological Effects of Living with HIV and Age-Related Comorbidities of Older Adulthood in African Americans. Serena Schur. Yes! Yes! yes. Um, committee Chair Betsy Bates Fried, Brett uh, Kia Keating will be hooding. Uh, dissertation title Spirituality Within Reach A Pathway Through Meditation. Davina Johnston. <laughs> Committee Chair, Salvador Trevino. Dissertation title, The Phenomenological Study of Mal de Quadrado, oops, Mal de Quadrado Syndrome, sorry. <laughs> it's a very important. Fuck that up. So. Brandard Maynard. <laughs> Committee Chair, Daniel Schwartz. Dissertation title, From Dawn to Dawn, The Journey of Karate Masters. <laughs> Vanessa Olguin. Committee Chair, Salvador Trevino. Dissertation title, Knowledge, Experience, and Training of Southern California Psychologists and Doctoral Psychology Interns on Fetal Alcohol Spectrum Disorders. <laughs> Maurizio Ortiz. <laughs> Committee Chair, Salvador Trevino. Dissertation title, Understanding the Experience of Immigration Among Adult Mexican-Born Males Living in the United States, an Exploration of Grief, Loss, and Coping. Landis Payne. <laughs> Committee Chair Ron Pilato. Dissertation title Immersive Cultural Plunge How Mental Health Trainees Can Exercise 
cultural competence with African American descendants of chattel slaves, a qualitative study. Dustin Weiss, oh wait, sorry, <laughs> Camila Sapel, <laughs> Seipel, thank you, Camila Seipel. <laughs> Committee Chair, Dr. Henry Soper, dissertation title, Comparison of Implicit Thought and Learning in Individuals with Schizophrenia. Dustin Weissman. <laughs> Committee Chair, Dr. Brett Kia Keating. Dissertation title, Impacts of Playing Massively Multiplayer Online Role-Playing Games on Individuals' Subjective Sense of Feeling Connected with Others. And Karen, Karen Whitaker. <laughs> Committee Chair, Salvador Trevino. Dissertation title, An Exploration into the Lived Experience of the Jazz Funeral. Please give a big round of applause for our doctoral candidate, Doctor of Psychology graduates. We are now approaching the end of our program. As the academic dean, it is an honor for me to recommend the graduates for their degrees. Graduates, please rise and stay in your places. Sir Provost, Distinguished Board of Governors, excuse me, Board of Governess, <laughs> I present to you the class of 2017 and recommend them to you as candidates for the following degrees with all the rights, honors, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining hereto. Bachelor of Arts in Liberal Studies. Master of Arts in Education. <laughs> Master of Arts in Psychology. <laughs> Master of Arts in Clinical Psychology. <laughs> Master of Business Administration. <laughs> okay. and doctorate in psychology. <laughs> Dr. Flores. Thank you, Academic Dean, Dr. Lipinski. Now, before I officially confer the degrees, I have a couple of important announcements. 
Out of uh, respect for our graduates, please remain in your seats during recessional and after all faculty and graduates have exited the ceremony. Uh, before I proceed to the next level, I also, we, we thanked our faculty, we thanked the parents. There's several staff here who have been working all day to make this possible and some of this have been working with you for a long time, advising you, recruiting you, helping you through registration and some other, please give them a hand. And uh, Daryl, with the IT too, I, I'm sorry I missed you. <laughs> uh, in a few minutes I will ask you to move your tassels to the left and then you will become a member of AUSB's Alumni Association. As such, I'd like to be the first to welcome you and to invite you to stay connected with your AUSB family and with the Antioch University family. Please stop by the Alumni Association, uh, the table in the lobby, and let us know how we can include you in future events. Also, the Alumni Association table, uh, where we have a small gift in recognition of your achievement. And one of your graduates is the new president of the Alumni Association. Uh, Kathy, where are you, Kathy Berber? By virtue of the authority granted to me by the Chancellor and by the Board of Governors of Antioch University Santa Barbara, I hereby confer upon these candidates the following degrees with all the rights, honors, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. Bachelor of Arts in Liberal Studies, Bachelor of Arts in Education, Master of Arts in Clinical Psychology, Master of Arts in Psychology, Master of Business Administration, and Doctor in Psychology in Clinical Psychology. Graduates, please change the tassels on your cap to the left side. All right. And congratulations to the class of 2017. Best wishes to all of you.